What up everybody and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz and I talk about blades and today guys I'm very happy to feature another fine product from Steel Wheel Knives. What we've got here is the Shaula flipper folder and I think that I'm pronouncing that correctly. S-H-A-U-L-A -A, Shaula uh, I think that I'm pronouncing that correctly and we're just going to go with that guys because uh, in the end it doesn't really matter. Uh, the knife itself is what matters not the name and you know what this is a pretty fine little knife from Steel Wheel. I want to say thank you to Paulina at Steel Wheel Knives uh, for sending this review sample out to me. Yes guys, this was provided to Baz on Blades by Steel Wheel Knives and um, I believe, I believe guys that we are going to be able to be completely honest about this review. Um, it's generally going to be very positive. There are a couple of things that I'd like to see improved on this knife, but overall I'm extremely happy with it, and uh, I believe that the viewers will be extremely happy with it too, because this knife is going to go into an upcoming giveaway. Uh, that is going to feature some steel wheel product and there will be a uh, news coming very soon on that giveaway so the steel wheel shola folder it is a flipper folder it is a little bit of a departure for steel wheel knives uh, because it is not on phosphor bronze bushings it is on bearings guys and I have disassembled this knife and taken a thorough look at the inside of it. It is on single row bearings and uh, is very well made, guys. And you know what? These knives are going for about $50. I checked at Blade HQ. That's what they're going to list at is about $50. And uh, I think that it's a pretty decent deal at that. There's uh, multiple different versions. There's only one size, and we'll get into the specs here in a minute. Uh, the differences are in the color of G10, uh, the color of the anodized aluminum uh, backspacers, and the finish on the blade. What we've got here is the F61-11, and what that signifies in the Shola lineup is blue G10 with green spacers and a satin finish blade. A very nice subdued satin, not an ultra high polish. Uh, it doesn't fingerprint real bad, guys. Uh, so it's, uh, it's that fine line between um, uh, not polished enough and overly polished. I very much appreciate that finish on that blade. So, uh, let's go ahead and we'll pull out some packaging here, guys. We're going to set the knife right over here. Take a look at the steel wheel packaging. It is in their slip style box. Inside, you're going to find just a little bit of steel wheel uh, merchandise and um, information on their card. Uh, the knife is going to come in a little bu uh, bubble wrap envelope uh, in their packaging. It's pretty basic guys and it's what we're used to seeing from Steel Wheel. It is functional as packaging because um, that's you know pretty much the packaging it's made to get the knife safely to the consumer and that's what it does. So let's talk about some specs, knock the numbers out first. Uh, this is a slim full size EDC type knife guys and you're looking at a uh, about a 3.4 inch blade length and that's about eight and a half centimeters uh, your blade stock thickness 120 thousandths of an inch or three millimeters uh, your blade width 932 thousandths of an inch or 23.6 millimeters uh, your handle length about four and three quarters of an inch or 12 centimeters. Uh, handle thickness about average. It's uh, 510 thousandths of an inch, uh, right around a half an inch there, about 13 millimeters. Uh, your handle width at the widest point, which is actually right here, 958 thousandths of an inch or 24.3 millimeters. Uh, your closed width, not much wider, guys. I did include the flipper tab. We'll go up to the widest point here. 
and that is 1.18 inches or 30.1 millimeters. So what we've got is an overall length of eight and an eighth inch or 20 and a half centimeters. Uh, your stop pin diameter, 115 thousandths of an inch, and that's right at three millimeters. Uh, it's actually 2.9 millimeters. Behind the edge thickness, a very EDCable 18 thousandths of an inch or 0.46 millimeters. Your uh, handle to blade ratio, 0.72, and your weight, a uh, fairly easy to carry, 3.6 ounces or 102 grams. As far as materials go, guys, your blade steel is D2. Uh, it is marked on the back with the along with the model name, the Shaula, and uh, your handle material is machine G10 over stainless liners. Those liners uh, do have some weight relieving on the show side, uh, and then the lock side is not weight relieved, guys. Uh, and, and you know what, the weight, 3.6 ounces, it does miss the one ounce per inch of blade length, but just barely, guys. Uh, so I, I'm going to say it's right in there in the sweet spot. And uh, let's see, we got the G10 over stainless liners, uh, stainless small parts in your pivot and Torx head screws for the body here. Uh, Torx head on a very good uh, fold over deep carry pocket clip. Uh, not only is this clip attractive and fits the design language of the knife, uh, it is low profile. Uh, it's got enough ramp to be functional over the material of your pocket. It's got enough clamping force to hold it uh, firmly in your pocket. I, I think that this pocket clip is just 110% win, uh, one of the best features of this knife. Uh, so very basic as far as the materials go, guys. Uh, it is on ceramic bearings. I cannot remember if that's a ceramic detent or not, but I want to say that it is, guys. I want to say that it was black, uh, but if I'm wrong on that, I apologize. I do not remember. Um, from my disassembly because i've been carrying this for about a week now guys i disassembled it a week ago and didn't make any notes i thought i would remember that and apparently i cannot um let's go back up here uh after we talk about materials and talk a little bit about d2 as a uh, blade steel uh you guys have been following me uh I i've reviewed a lot of uh, premium budget knives coming out of China over the last year they are using a lot of D2 everybody's like Chinese D2 Chinese D2 uh, guys there's no such thing as Chinese D2 uh, no more than there is American D2 or British D2 or I mean what it's D2 guys to be D2 tool steel it has to have a specific makeup and that's what makes it D2 not where it's made a D2 is a decades old basic tool steel if it's actually D2 it doesn't matter where it's made as long as it's a clean facility guys so you don't have um, any contamination of the steels so I'm not too awful worried about whether it's Chinese D2 or American D2 and Steel Wheel is a reputable company we know for a fact through different steel tests on other channels that they are using actual D2 steel so no issues there it's a high carbon high chromium semi stainless tool steel with a buttload of vanadium in it uh, what you get is uh, pretty decent edge retention. D2 tends to take a pretty toothy and aggressive cutting edge. Uh, it won't hold a, a razor edge for a long time, but the working edge that comes behind that razor edge, uh, it will hold for a long time. That's all of those vanadium carbides that are suspended in the matrix of the steel along the edge. It's a very aggressive cutting steel. Now, it is semi-stainless. Uh, it's easy to take care of, guys. Anybody that tells you D2 is not easy to take care of, uh, they just don't know how to take care of it. You wipe it down with some mineral oil. You put some Tough Glide on it. Uh, you know, motor oil, cooking oil, 
um, I, I, you know, I don't care. Uh, it, it's just pretty easy to take care of, guys. Now, those that live on the coast in a salty environment may want to look elsewhere uh, because it is semi-stainless, and you don't want to have to chase your steel because of the environment you live in. So keep that in mind. Uh, materials on the handle, guys. Again, the G10 over the stainless liners. Um, it's, it's just pretty basic build, guys. Uh, what is the big deal in the Shola folder is that steel wheel has gone to bearings on the pivot. They are so well known for using phosphor bronze bushings. And I have reviewed uh, four or five or six steel wheel flippers with phosphor bronze bushings and they're really good at doing that type of build. They typically get the detent dialed in, uh, the tolerances are good, uh, the frames are straight so you get decent centering, um, and, and they tend to be pretty good flippers for phosphor bronze bushing knives. In fact, my full size plague doctor from steel wheel is uh, one of the best flippers I've ever owned uh, or used, and it's on phosphor bronze bushings. It is equally as good and strong a flipper as any bearing knife that I've ever gotten a hold of. Now, um, it's a big it's a big trend within the market uh, to go to bearings because uh, everybody wants smooth, everybody wants easy. They want it to be you know all drop shutty and and you know just butter like and hydraulic and you know super flippy fidget toy. So Steel Wheel has got to cave and do this. I think they've done a a, a pretty decent good job on this. Uh, there's uh, there's going to be one weakness in this particular example that we'll go over here uh, in a minute on action. But let's go into fit and finish first, guys. Uh, the grinds on this blade are fantastic. And they're fantastic. It's a very basic blade guide. You've got a um, sort of a clip right here. It's not a drop point. It is clipped right here. It's a flat plane clip uh, integrating uh, a short sort of diamond section swedge here uh, this is what you would consider to be a um, uh, it's not really a saber grind guys it's a it's a flat grind it's um, four-fifths the width of the blade uh, it does come down to a thin behind the edge thickness of about 18 thousandths of an inch so it is pretty doggone slicey uh, the edge profile on it is even side to side guys it is well sharpened all the way from termination to tip uh, that tip is not rounded over it's perfectly sharpened and it does pierce with uh, very little effort guys just touching it and it catches and pierces so good job on the grinds and sharpening uh, you do have a functional sharpening choil here and uh that is good, guys. It looks like it looks like that it is going to clear that plunge grind. Uh, I'd like to see it clear it just a little bit more, maybe another millimeter. But I do think that it is clear of the plunge grind totally. There, uh, you can see where the plunge, uh, where the uh, full stock thickness plunges down to the ground thickness there. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that's going to work out. Uh, you do have some pretty decent jimping up here. A, a moderate section of jimping that is comfortable and functional. Uh, it's not the tackiest jimping that I've ever seen, but on an EDC type of knife, it is perfectly functional. So good job there, guys. Uh, the markings, uh, very simple. Steel wheel on the front with their maker's mark uh, the name of the product on the back with the steel designator it's well done it's crisply done uh, it's not overly billboarded or anything like that and uh, you know they've done a decent job there on the blade um, I'm pretty happy with that I've seen uh, a lot of steel wheel product and it's always the grinds are pretty much always spot on guys uh, fit and finish in the handle look at this uh, G10 guys 
Uh, it is textured, and then they have come in and ball milled this uh, grid pattern, this sort of radial grid pattern that follows the lines of the handle. It is very attractive. It's subtle, guys, but it's very attractive, and it is, guys, it's very grippy. I very much like this handle treatment here as far as the scales go. Uh, you know, then you see they're faceted all the way around the edge with a wide facet, guys, to make it comfortable. Uh, you know, the small parts on here are satin, you know, sort of as machine small parts with a, a large decorative pivot here uh, that is a, a Torx head pivot, guys. Uh, you've got T6 on the body and T8 on the pivot here. And um, the fit and finish is, it's, it's pretty doggone good. There's a slight nail catch between the scales and the, uh, the liners there, but it's very tightly done. You can see here we're getting uh, nice and close up here. Uh, everything is tightly done, guys, so uh, kudos to Steel Wheel for that. Uh, these uh, aluminum, anodized aluminum barrel spacers here that are shouldered are very well done. Uh, you don't see a lot of green. Uh, the green is pretty attractive here with the blue. Now, the other versions of this, you can also get black G10, and it will have blue anodized spacers. And then there is a red G10 that's over black liners and has a black spacers. And um, then you can get both the black G10 and the red G10 in the black blade finish. Um, I think it's attractive. It's very well done as far as fit and finish. Again, that pocket clip, awesome, awesome, awesome pocket clip. Uh, look in there, guys. Uh, you don't have a whole bunch of screw filling that up. The screws are recessed, and they're flat-headed, guys. Um, that's a whole lot of win right there. That's a, you know, Friday night football win right there, guys. So, um, uh, as far as fit and finish goes, I don't see any issues at all in this knife. As far as materials go, no issues at all. Let's get into the action. That's what everybody wants to hear about. Still will go into bearings. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, uh, the feel is nearly hydraulic. It is extremely smooth as far as the rolling resistance, guys. Uh, there is good tension on the lock bar, uh, but not too much. I'm not feeling any um, detent drag or anything like that. Now, I did disassemble this knife, guys, just to take a look at the inside of it. So I did clean it up and lubricate it when I did, but it came out of the box pretty clean. Um, and it was lubricated, uh, although the lubrication on the bearings was a grease, it was not an oil, and uh, it did feel like it was a grease, guys. It wasn't as free feeling uh, because of the viscosity, uh, the thickness of the grease versus uh, the more thin oil that I use. Uh, it's very, very smooth, guys. Um, the design of the flipper setup as far as the flipper tab size and shape, uh, its relationship to the center line of the pivot uh, is very good, guys. This likes sort of a hybrid uh, push button um, light switch type of movement, and it is a pretty decent flipper. The one weakness on my example here is the D10 is not the stoutest D10. Now, I believe, yeah, I can uh, gravity flip this knife. Uh, it does have enough D10 to work as a flipper, guys. No issues there. No issues there. Uh, you don't really have to be super conscious of your technique. Um, to get it to flip, you can fail it if you try to fail it. But if you're putting any uh, moderate effort into flipping it at all, it's a satisfying enough flipper. You just don't get that 
uh, that feeling that you get from a strong detent that it's just not satisfying and that it doesn't have that crispness. Um, plenty of energy there to use as a flipper. It's just not quite crisp enough to make it a super enjoyable fidget toy. Now, as far as the closing goes, uh, it's a butter smooth, guys. No issues there. Uh, as far as the centering, my example is just, I mean, just a hair off of center. Uh, I did, when I disassembled it and reassembled it, it went back exactly the way it was, guys. Um, so it's pretty doggone decently centered, uh, although not quite perfect as far as the uh, blade play or anything you can see I'm twisting on this enough to flex the blade steel itself I've got zero play in the pivot there as far as lateral play as far as radial play zero guys it's a very solid liner lock lockup here is your lockup on the example the liner is fully engaged but does have plenty of uh, room to move across the blade tang. I call that about 35% uh, lockup right there. Uh, you know what, guys? It's a it's a pretty doggone decent flipper. I wish it had a little bit stronger detent, guys. We're going to call this a medium detent, where I prefer my detents to be medium hard to hard and have a crisp. Uh, character to them. Uh, this is more medium with a softer edge to it. And, uh, and that's okay, guys. That's okay. And in the $50 knives, these $50 range knives, guys, they're already pushing the limits on fit and finish. And really, one of the hardest things to dial in on a production flipper is that detent strength, guys. Uh, there have been plenty of companies that make much more expensive knives that have had similar issues uh, with dialing in a detent and getting that balance between uh, hard enough and not too hard guys because it's very easy to go from uh, not hard enough to too hard uh, just take a look a few years back at the problems that zero tolerance was having uh, I went into uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works to look at zero tolerance knives once and looked at a, I don't even remember what the model was it was one of the hinderer models and literally every example they had the detent was so hard people could not even open the knives and that was every example they had so it wasn't too soft of a detent but it was too hard guys that's just a, a sort of an example of that balancing act that's required in knives and you got to keep in mind guys uh, everything affects everything else in a folding knife um, hopefully if you like this design and you go out and grab an example, your example will have a little bit stouter detent, guys. Uh, now, as far as the design itself goes, let's talk about ergos and utility. And they are excellent. This is an excellent design, guys. This is really fitting into that longer, narrower profile that I personally have grown to love in the last few years. Um, you know, once I got uh, into like the zero tolerance 0452, I really, I just love this narrow, long profile, guys, because it carries so slimly in the pocket. It's not overly thick, right at a half an inch. It's not overly wide. It just, you know, an inch and a tenth, basically 1.18 inches, including, um, you know, a flipper tab that is not oversized as far as uh, protruding out from the handle. Um, the knife, it starts out wider, but it gets narrower towards the butt end, and it is tip-up carry. So when you slip that down into your pocket, <clears throat> the widest part is down low in your pocket and the part where you have to move across with your hand to put your hand down to the pocket is the narrow part and it's radius. 
I mean, look at this, guys. This is what you're going to encounter as you put your hand down in your pocket with this knife. It's going to sit right over against the edge with a, uh, you know, deep carry pocket clip. It just disappears in the pocket in literally every way, guys. Uh, it's not heavy. It's easy on the carry. It's deep carry. Um, it's just a, a great slender design that has still got enough of beef to it to be comfortable in the hands. Now, I have uh, medium, medium, large hands here, guys, so you can see the fit in my hand right here. Um, it's not too thin. Now, if you have super large Sasquatch hands, uh, this may feel a little narrow to you. But anybody with large or medium or even smaller hand size is going to find this knife to be very comfortable. It's a good balance of width to thickness to length. Um, and it is very utilitarian as far as the handle shape goes. The blade shape, again, guys, it's a, you know, it's a clip that mimics a, mimics a drop point. Uh, you've got a nice high flat grind, guys. It is 18 thousandths behind the edge. Uh, so it is, um, this, this knife to me, the way it cuts with the factory edge is a borderline of a superior slicer. Uh, you know, some knives are cutters and some are, some are slicers. And this one is a, a cutter bordering on a really good slicer. And that's great for EDC. Enough meat there to be strong, but enough thinness to be slicey. A good balance, guys. A great blade shape. Uh, plenty of belly here, some straight edge for that type of cutting, nice piercing point, uh, a great balance in uh, sort of a classic blade shape, guys. And, uh, you know, combined with the comfort of the handle, it just makes for uh, a superior feeling, uh, utilitarian EDC type of uh Knife. Now, if you want something this size, uh, you know that the most popular knife in that size range is going to be the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, the PM2. And it is a wider, flat profile. And in some people's hands, it feels a little blocky, uh, a little wide. Uh, this knife does not have that feeling. It is, a, it, to me, it's much more comfortable, guys. So as far as ergos and utility go, it's a win. Um, Steel Wheel Shola. Bazon Blades, are you going to recommend this knife? You know what, guys? I am going to recommend this knife. If the profile is something that you like as far as uh, a longer, narrower uh, profile for an EDC. Uh, 3.6 ounces is very respectable. You got a great deep carry pocket clip. The fit and finish is good. The action, uh, although the D10 on mine is a little softer than I would like, it is still very good, guys. It is a, a very functional flipper. And um, I just, I, I'm very happy with what I'm seeing so far out of Steel Wheel uh, with their uh, bearing knives that they're bringing in. And I hope that they do more, guys. Uh, my only uh, thing is I'd like to see a little stronger detent. So, guys, the Steel Wheel Shola. Uh, no matter what the finish you pick, whether it's a blue, black, or red G10, whether it's a satin or black blade, uh, I think is going to make an excellent uh, slim EDC knife. Bazon Blades is going to recommend this knife. Uh, we're going to set this down right here, guys. You can take a look at it. I'll get my hands out of the way. Um, you know, thank you to Polina at Steel Wheel Knives. Thank you, Steel Wheel Knives, for sending this on. Guys, be looking for this giveaway coming up. It's a big, big prize package from Steel Wheel Knives. All right, guys, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.